And joining us now, Navdeep Singh Baines, who until last month was the Liberal Member of Parliament for Mississauga, Brampton South. And I remember you in 2004 coming into this studio <laughs> yes, as part of our, as well. our rookies panel. That's right. And here you are again. Well, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Steve. Thank you for being here. You are, um, I think it's fair to say, one of the most visible Sikh members of the last parliament, in part because of the turban that you wear on your head. Correct. Uh, let's just do some background off the top. Sikhism, what is the faith about? Uh, basically, it boils down to uh, modern uh, religious uh, faith, uh, basically over 500 years old, uh, mm -hmm. bas uh, believes in equality, social justice, uh, freedoms, uh, freedom of religion. Uh, believes in basically people that follow the faith, believe in one God. So a very simple, straightforward, modern faith. You say modern, but it's 500 years old. Relative to, say, Christianity or relative to the other faiths that have been around for much, much longer. And what does it mean to you personally to be a Sikh? Just to be a good person. I know that's oversimplification, but that's what it boils down to, is to be a good person, not only internally but externally, to be good to people around you, to try to live truthfully, to be honest, uh, to work hard. And those are the values that are very much part of the Sikh faith. Is there a connection for you between your faith and public service? Oh, absolutely. There's How so? a, well, I think there's some common values. If you look at the Sikh faith and if you look at Canadian values, there's a lot in common. Take for the notion equality. The Sikh faith was founded on equality. Uh, one should not discriminate against uh, anyone because of their caste, color, uh, their sex, or gender. And so, therefore, that notion of equality is very much for the Sikh faith, but that's also very much a Canadian value. Uh, we take great pride in that. It's part of our constitutional democracy. It's part of the Charter Rights and Freedom. And so that's very much, uh, for me, uh, a connection between my personal values and my faith and those that in the Canadian context and Canadian politics. Now, which, first of all, the audio guy is going to give me 20 bucks after I get off the air for me to tell you that that's a beautiful bracelet, but it's knocking on the table all the <laughs> no, time no and driving problem, him crazy. No problem, no problem. So, yes, <laughs> it's, it's part of my faith as well, but I'm more than willing to accommodate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, is there anything particular uh, about the faith or culture that you think makes Sikhs, as opposed to other different groups in our country, particularly interested in public service? I think it first of all stems from a sense of belonging. I think the Sikh community very much understands that they're very fortunate to live in a country where they can practice their unique faith, or where they have the ability to be very much part of any other Can uh, like any other Canadian. Uh, I remember when I was growing up uh, in the early 1990s, uh, both Aids Dillon, for example, uh, was an RCMP officer that wanted to join the RCMP, uh, had some challenges, but then he was ultimately allowed to do so because he wanted to wear a turban, and he was able to wear a turban in the RCMP and still does up until today. Uh, my good friend, Harjit Sajjan, uh, is a part of the Canadian Armed Forces, and he too wears a turban and is very much part of Canadian society. So I think those are clear examples. And you always did? And Did you ever have a, anybody give you a hard time over wearing your turban in Parliament? No, um, but I do recall not, a, not too long ago with respects to the Kirpan issue when the bloc presented a motion in the House or they wanted to present a motion in the House and they did so at the provincial level and they wanted to uh, ban the Kirpan from the House of Commons. This is the ceremonial dagger That's that you correct, wear. that's right. Which and you did wear in the House. That, and I still do. And, still and uh, I recall talking about that, talking about the fact that it was very much part of my faith, very much part of my Canadian identity, very much part of who I am. And ultimately, uh, we went out on that debate. And that, that is the reason why the community is so actively involved, because it has a sense of belonging. It realizes that we have all these rights. But at the same time, we have responsibilities. It's very mm -hmm. easy to say I have the right to wear a turban. It's very easy to say I have the right to wear a care pad. But as a minority, we can't take that for granted. And we have a responsibility not only to protect what we have in this country, and we're very fortunate, to make sure others are also able to uh, practice their different beliefs and their different faiths. So if I hear you right, being a Sikh, a, a, an observant Sikh, is absolutely consistent with public service in the country. It's almost a religious calling to be in politics. Yep. Is that fair to say? I would say absolutely. I mean, it's a very socially active faith. Uh, if you look at the Sikh history, uh, if you look at the various prophets, it's a faith uh, that also believes in freedom of religion, which too, again, is a very important Canadian value. Uh, the notion of multiculturalism. Uh, one of the Sikh prophets actually built a mosque. Uh, another one sacrificed his life to make sure others could practice their faith. So it really stems from that notion that we have a responsibility uh, to give back, to be active. Uh, take example, uh, the various gurdwaras uh, across the country. Uh, people sit there uh, in the langar halls uh, and people prepare food, they serve food. That's, a, that's an external manifestation of that notion that you got to give back, you have to work hard, uh, and you must uh, make sure that you help others. Regardless of what temple you're in at the time. Absolutely. Okay. And, and if you look at the Golden Temple, as uh, Darbar Sab, mm -hmm. uh, for example, there's four doors. And each door represents this notion that everyone's welcome. That regardless, again, who you are, where you come from, 
you're more than welcome to come in, be part of the congregation, have a meal, and, and everyone's welcome. And that is really an external, again, example of taking a Sikh philosophy and then it's showing it uh, out, out played out in a day-to-day -day life style where people actively get involved, prepare food, serve food, and help their other members of the community. I want to make sure I'm saying it properly because I've always said Sikh, but now I hear you saying Sikh all the time. Which is Sikh, it? Sikh, Sikh. It's a different way of expressing it. You say tomato, I say tomato? <laughs> That's correct. Eat, both are okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, good enough. Uh, the tradition of Siva, selfless service. Yes, yes. That's part of Sikhism as well, right? Absolutely. It's and a, therefore consistent with public life. Exactly, and it's a very important tenet. Uh, there's a couple of examples in Mississauga, for example, some of my good friends have opened up a food bank called the Seva Food Bank. Oh. And it's again about self selfless sacrifice, helping others. It's not only about uh, the Sikh community. I think you'll notice now with second, third, fourth generations, because Sikhs have been in Canada for now over 100 years, you'll see the community now branching out beyond simply members of its own community and own faith and interacting with other faiths and other communities very well. And Seva Food Bank is an example of that. Uh, and uh, that's the concept that really, again, is part of the, the culture, the mentality, the thinking. Uh, another example is the Canadian Blood Services. I just mm -hmm. saw a few days ago uh, that it talked about visible minorities in certain ethnic groups uh, are not donating enough blood. But it actually pointed out that the Sikh community was the exception. Hmm. And again, that comes from that notion of giving back, of wanting to participate, of having a responsibility to participate. And that's very much entrenched with the Sikh philosophy. It's not simply a matter of, uh, of having certain values, as I talked about, very consistent with Canadian values, but it's about putting them into action. Okay, public life we've touched on, but there's also a long history of Sikhism being ha having a long association with military as well. Yes. Um, same kind of idea there? Absolutely. I mean, my grandfather served in the military, uh, in the Indian Army, uh, as I indicated uh, to you, that we take pride in, those, in that service. And, for example, every Remembrance Day, I actually participated in a local Remembrance Day ceremony, then I traveled to Kitchener, where we also remember Private Bookham Singh, the first Sikh uh, that is actually um, buried there. Uh, and there's a ceremony that takes place there from First World War I. Uh, and an incredible history. Was a Incredi Sikh Canadian? Yes, that's right. From in World War I in Kitchener. in Kitchener. That's right. Hmm. And there's a ceremony, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of education now going on in the community. And again, it boils down to the fact that we have a responsibility, right? And a responsibility to fight for those values. And we've seen those values not only consistent with Canadian values, but going back to World War II, World War I. And that is a prime example of how the community takes pride in those that are involved in you know, defending our national, international interests as well. And Bukum Singh's story is in a remarkable story, uh, you know, coming to, you know, being buried here, protecting and fighting in World War, uh, protecting Canadians and fighting in World War I, being part of the British Empire then at that time. It was a remarkable story. Hmm. What are the origins of the Sikh duty to fight injustice? Um, it really, it again, starts with the Sikh prophets. The, the founding of the faith was based on equality and fighting against injustice. And then it manifests itself throughout various uh, forms and examples. And as I in indicated to you, for example, it was the ninth prophet, uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur, who decided to, again, sacrifice himself so that other people can practice their faith. Uh, and that's very much part of the Sikh identity, the culture. We are a minority in Canada, we're a minority in India. We've been a minority for quite some, quite, since the inception of the Sikh faith, right? It's not a faith that goes out and converts. It's very much a faith that people, if you choose to practice it, by all means you can. And we always realize that as a minority, we have a responsibility to fight for what we have, but also to make sure others also have those same opportunities, right? Okay, so if, if this draw to public service is so strong in the faith, one would assume that Sikhs would be disproportionately represented in the House of Commons. Now, I won't ask you to speak for this house because <laughs> you're not there, but in the last house, was that the case? Uh, again, if you look at the population and the mm -hmm. number of MPs, yes, one could argue that, that there was a higher percentage of MPs um, in the House of Commons uh, versus the population. Um, but that will fluctuate time to time depending on, on many factors, on party status and so forth, um, and political, uh, political election outcomes. But the fundamental driver, you're absolutely right, is that there is a desire, not only at the federal level, uh, provincially and municipally as well. Well, here's where I find out how partisan you really are. <laughs> you never have been one of the more partisan ones, but you know that um, Conservative MP Tim Upple is the first turbaned Sikh to sit in the cabinet of this country. Yes. He's there right now. He represents one of the ridings in Western Canada. Correct. How, now, admittedly, he's a conservative, and I'm sure you <laughs> wish it weren't. But having said that, is that a big deal for you to see a man with a turban? It's a point take, of pride, I think, in, uh, for many Canadians, including the Sikh community, but also reflects the kind of country we have. And again, reminds us how, how incredible multiculturalism is, uh, the fact that it does work, 
the fact that regardless of what you look like, it's what you believe in, what your values are, what you're willing to stand up for, that really matters. And he's representing a riding in Western Canada. He's sitting in the cabinet table. And I think that's a positive step, not only for the community, but also for, for Canada and Canadians, uh, Canadians in general. Uh, well, let's find out how positive a sign you think it is. Would it have been better for him to win, get into cabinet, be a physical manifestation of how well Sikhs have done in this country, or would it have been better for a 60-year-old white male to have won that seat, who well, was a liberal? <laughs> well, for me, at a political level, mm -hmm. I would want a liberal to win, because I very much believe in the liberal party and the liberal progressive agenda, because I think it's the right direction for our country. But on a personal level, to see other people uh, from other communities do well politically is always good for the country as well. Mind you, I would have to work hard to convince them to join the Liberal Party. <laughs> so I think that's going to be a tough sell in the next little while. <laughs> uh, okay, now let's finish up on this. The visibility of your faith, the turban, you talk about the Kirpan. Uh, they have sometimes been seen as obstacles to Sikhs participating in various things, public service, military, um, kids soccer, you know, yes, a, a whole absolutely. bunch of different things. It would be presumably easier for many Sikhs to say, you know what, this, this door is obviously not open to us and we're just going to forget about it. That appears not to be the case. Why have, why have so many in your community not simply given up? Um, again, it comes from this notion that uh, we are very fortunate to live in a country where we can practice a unique identity, that we must fight for what we believe in, uh, not only for ourselves but for others as well. And we're also very fortunate to live in a country where we have a constitutional democracy that's based on the charter rights and freedom that enables us to practice our faith. And we know we have that support. We know we have those laws in place. I very much consider myself as part of the charter generation. I was born in 1977, but as you know, in 82, the charter came into effect. And I've seen charter jur jurisprudence. I've seen various, uh, various uh, cases before the courts where it's been very clear that minority rights are, are there and protected. And so that makes uh, Sikhs feel very much, uh, very much part of the system, very much part of Canadian lifestyle. And that's why they're so actively engaged. One last thing. Uh, most folks I know didn't expect you to lose on election night. <laughs> How are you doing? Very well. I mean, if losing on election night was one of the uh, one of the worst things that could happen to me, I'm extremely fortunate. I'm blessed uh, with two young girls. My wife has been very supportive, and uh, you know, I adapt to change very well, and I look forward to you know getting involved in the community. Nav, good luck with whatever comes next. Thank you very and much. Thanks for Steve. coming into TVO tonight. Thanks very much for having me. Nav Deep Singh Baines.